In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own simulator game on Roblox so that you can get bigger and rebirth when you hit a certain amount of strength. Let's go ahead and get started. So welcome back to another tutorial, my name is Alvin Blocks. if it is your first time on my channel make sure that you subscribe and you've clicked on the notification bell so that you never miss out when I upload a brand new video. So we're going to be making a simple simulator game in this tutorial, you'll be able to have a weight tool and obviously when you click the tool you will gain strength and once you hit a certain number of strength you'll be able to rebirth and so all of your stats will be reset but you gain one rebirth and you'll be able to gain more strength over time. So let's begin by firstly making our work uh, area look nice. I'm going to just set my base plate to a green colour and to a uh, grass texture and we're also going to get rid of the studs on the top surface just like this uh, there we go we've got a bright green base plate and i'm going to also make the sky look nice as well you don't have to do this i just like to do it because it makes the uh, the game that we're working in look really nice so i'm going to insert a sunless blue sky box into the lighting and we can get started with the simulator so what we're going to do first is design our tool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on starter pack, click on the plus and add a tool. Then I'm going to name this tool weight. The next thing that you're going to want to do is design your tool. What I'm going to do, I'm going to insert a part into the workspace here. And this part is going to be a simple uh, little tool, which uh, which will be the thing which we lift, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, make it uh, yellow. And if you want to, you can make this uh, look much nicer. But you need to make sure that you call it handle. Now, I'm going to make sure that it's unanchored uh, and that uh, can collide is set to false on the tool so that uh, it doesn't collide with anything uh, if it touches something. So we're going to take this handle and I'm going to place it inside of the weight tool and if you go ahead and play the game uh, you should see that we have a tool in our uh, inventory and if we open it up you can see that we are holding a weight. If you want to learn how to customise the tool uh, keep watching and we'll get onto that later on in the video. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start coding the uh, the actual tool. So first things that we're going to do is we're going to insert a, a local script into here. And we're also going to need a module script for later on. So I'm just going to insert those now so that we don't have to do those later on. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to work on our local script. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a, uh, a function which will run when we click the, uh, the mouse. So we're going to do some variables first. We're just going to get our module script by saying local module equals require. And then in the brackets we can say script.parent.module script or a wait for child module script, just to make sure that it's fully loaded, uh, ready for us to uh, call to. We're then going to want to uh, make sure we have the, the closing brackets, so you have two closing brackets on that line. We're then going to have a, uh, a variable for the, the player who's, uh, who's uh, where the, these scripts are executing. So the local player will be game.players.localPlayer. And we're also going to get the player's mouse because we're going to need that uh, for when they actually click the screen. So we can say local mouse equals uh, player colon get mouse. And we can also use the mouse for some on screen effects when they click the mouse as well. So to know when the player has clicked the mouse, all that we need to do is do an activated event. So we can say script dot parent dot activated. Uh, colon connect function in brackets and then another pair of brackets uh, and then drop a line like this so this event will run whenever well, this function will run whenever the player clicks their mouse so what we're going to do is we're going to 
uh, create a function in our module script which will control all of the, the lifting and then we can call that module uh, when we want to lift the weight. So over here what we're going to do is we're going to drop a line and say local replicated storage equals game colon get service replicated storage just like this. Now in the replicated storage what we're going to do is we're, we're going to store our remote events and when the player clicks we're going to uh, fire an event to give them some more strength so that it is uh, able to uh, comply with filtering enabled so that your game uh, does not break and that it is protected from exploiters. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function uh, and this function will run when we click the mouse. So we can just say function and then give it a name, uh, module.lift. Okay. And then drop a line and you should have this end uh, added in here which shows that it is a function. And any co uh, any code inside of this function uh, will run when we call module.lift in the local script. So we can just fire off our event, but we need to actually create the event first. So let's create a folder in replicated storage and we'll call this folder uh, remotes because our remote events and functions are going to go in there. And we're going to create a remote event called lift. Now, if you don't know what a remote event is, I'm just going to quickly explain it. So a Roblox game works like this. You have all of the players in the game, which are called clients, and they're all connected to uh, one big computer owned by Roblox called the server. And all of the scripts on this server help to control the game and what's happening at the moment. And so what happens is when somebody moves their character, the server will see this change and it will update everybody else's uh, game, all of the clients, to show that the the other the, the player that moved, uh, so that the character gets moved. So the server just controls all of the players in the game, and uh, what we do is, if we uh, ran code on the client then somebody could exploit that for their own good. So if we handled all of the uh, strength giving on the client and we gave all of the uh, strength in this local script, then somebody could easily exploit that and give themselves 999 uh, or infinite uh, cash or strength. So we do all of the checks on the server and we give the strength on the server because uh, and no clients can actually see server scripts and they can't edit them so that uh, the game cannot be exploited. So that's why we're using remote events uh, because it is a way to communicate between the client and the server. But if you don't understand this, uh, don't worry too much because especially if you're a, a beginner, uh, because I do have lots more videos on uh, filtering enabled on my channel. So make sure you go ahead and check those out. So inside of this activated uh, event, what we can do is we can call our module.lift uh, by saying module, uh, which is our variable up here, and then we can say uh, .lift. And that will basically call uh, that uh, function in the module. Okay, so now that we've uh, done that, what we can do is we can go back to the module script and we can actually fire our remote event. Okay, so to do this, all we need to do, actually, let's give it a name first. We're going to call this one lift. So we're going to fire it by saying replicated storage can wait for child remotes. In fact, we don't need to uh, wait for it because uh, this is going to be called when uh, replicated storage uh, has been when the it's, it's the player is going to click their mouse, so we don't actually need to wait for it because the game isn't starting up. So we can say replicated storage dot remotes uh, dot lift colon fire server, and this is going to send a request to this remote event, and then we will pick it up in a server script, and then we will give the player some strength when they uh, when that request is received. So we'll go ahead and make a script in server script service now. And this is going to handle uh, all of the remotes, as we just said. So let's go ahead and create a, a variable for replicated storage, because that's where the remote events are located. So we can say local replicated storage equals game colon get service replicated storage. And what we can do now 
is we can get the uh, what, what we want to do is we want to uh, have some data okay we want to have some data about uh, the players currently in the game and what this data is going to do is it's going to uh, create a debounce so that the player cannot spam click so we're gonna have a filter which prevents the player from spam clicking to get strength so what we're going to do is we're going to say local remote data equals game uh, colon get service uh, server storage and then we're going to say colon wait for child uh, remote data and what we're going to do is just in server storage here we're going to create a folder and we're going to call it remote data so we're storing the debounce in server storage so that if they click the button again and we receive another request we can check that uh, the debounce value which we're going to put in this folder and if it's true then we know that they have already clicked the button in the last second or so but if it's false we know that they haven't clicked the button and the cooldown which you're going to make has uh, that's been completed so that they're able to click the button again so debounce basically works by preventing a user from uh, doing an action multiple times within a set amount of time so what we're going to do is we're going to add a little cooldown here so local cooldown equals uh, one okay so that is the number of seconds uh, between clicks and you can edit that to your liking so we actually need to uh, have a uh, function here and an event which will trigger this function and the event is going to be listening out for this remote event to be called by the client and obviously when it is we'll pick it up and we will check to see if the player uh, can uh, gain strength whether that debounce cooldown has been exceeded or not and if they're able to uh, if the, if if they've uh, if they're not currently uh, in a cooldown then we will let them gain some strength so we can say replicated storage dot remotes uh, dot lift uh, and then on server event like this colon connect function player okay now what we're going to what we're doing here is as i said we're picking up the request because obviously in the uh, local script here in the module script we are we're saying fire server so that's triggering the event and firing a request to the server and then when we get that that uh, request so on server event we're going to connect it up and execute this function so inside of here we actually want to first and we're actually passing through the uh, player as an argument here uh, and an argument is basically uh, some data which is passed through uh, when this when this event is triggered okay and, and the data which gets passed through with this remote event is the player that triggered uh, the event so we want to check first to see if the player has a remote data folder so we are going to actually need to create this folder and what we'll do is we'll do this when the player enters the game. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to just create another script just to keep things organized. And this script is going to be called uh, stats. And while we're at it, let's just change the other script to be called remotes because that's handling all of our remote events and remote functions. So inside of the stats script, we're going to do a very simple game dot players dot player added function like this or event uh, and this is going to run when a new player joins the game so what we want to do is we want to create uh, a remote uh, we want to want to create a folder inside of the remote data folder with their name and then we can store their debounce uh, value in there so what we're going to say is we're going to uh, do local uh, folder or remote data folder or just data folder uh, because that's what I've called it in my uh, script uh, beforehand so I just want to keep it all organized uh, local data folder equals instance dot new uh, and then we'll call that folder because we're inserting a folder instance uh, and we're going to give that data folder a name and that name is going to be the name of the player we're also going to pass an argument over here because the argument that we can pass is the player that joined the game because obviously we don't know uh, the name of any players that are going to join the game we can't predict the future so we just say player and that is going to be the player who joins the game uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say data folder dot parent uh, equals game dot server storage 
dot remote data. Okay, uh, let's just say game gets service. In fact, let's make a variable for server storage. At the top here, local server storage uh, equals game colon get service uh, server storage. Now we put the folder in server storage because it can't be accessed by any clients, so exploiters cannot uh, change it. So if so, they can't change it, so that they're able to spam click, for example. So now that we've got that folder in there, all we need to do is create the debounce value. So we can say local debounce equals instance dot new. And then we can say bool value because it's either going to be a true or false value, whether the debounce is in effect or not. And let's just do a closing bracket. I'm going to say debounce.name equals debounce and debounce.parent equals data folder. So if we go ahead and join the game, we should be able to head into the server. You can see that the client actually can't access server storage. But if we go to the server, and we go to server storage inside of remote data we have a folder with our name and we have our debounce value now when we click and the event is fired this will be set to true and we'll have an if statement checking to see if it is true and if it is uh, the player won't be allowed to get any more strength until it is set to false again so it's uh, it's stopping them from being able to spam click sort of like rate limiting so uh, if we go back to the remote script, we're now able to check to see if they have that remote data folder. And if they don't have it, then we can't actually action their request to give them strength. Because if they don't have a, a debounce, then they'll be able to spam click. So we're just going to say, if not remote data, colon find first child, player dot name, uh, then let's just get rid of that then we can return no folder and end. So what this is doing is we're checking to see if there is no folder. So we're saying if, and this part, not remote data. So remote data, uh, so what we're doing here in the highlighted part is checking to see if they have uh, a, a, a folder inside of that remote data. And the not basically inverts, uh, in, inverses uh, what we've got here. So if there isn't a folder, then we're just going to return back to the local script uh, because what we're doing here is, well, we're just returning uh, this function so that it, it just breaks, okay? It stops, it doesn't continue uh, any longer because they don't have a folder, they don't have a folder, so we can't do anything else because we can't check to see if they've got a debounce, so we just, we just stop it. But if they have got the folder, then they will have passed that uh, if statement check and any further code in this event will execute. So we want to get their debounce value now because we know that they've got a folder if they've got to this point. So we can say local debounce equals remote data and then we're going to get their folder by saying in square brackets player.name. So that's just getting the uh, the folder because obviously if we did remote data dot player dot name it wouldn't make sense. So we put the name in these square brackets and then we can just say dot debounce. So we've got the value and all we need to do now is check to see if not debounce then. Now this is a typical debounce script. So not debounce basically means uh, if the debounce is false. And if the debounce is false, then we're going to allow them to gain strength. Okay. So if the debounce is false, then anything inside of the, this if statement is going to run. So we can say debounce dot value equals true because we want to set it to true and when it's true if they try to send another request in uh, then it's going this this it, this is not going to pass through this if statement right because it's true so they won't be able to spam click because their request will be blocked by this debounce until it's set to false again so what we can do is we can give them uh, some more strength so we can say player dot leader stats dot strength dot value equals player dot leader stats dot strength dot value plus 25 and now what we're going to do is obviously if you rebirth then you, you're going to want to gain more strength because you've just given up all of your strength to start again from nothing so you're going to want to have more strength each time uh, you click 
when you rebirth. So we can take uh, 25 here and multiply it by the number of rebirths you have. So we can have player dot leader stats uh, dot rebirths dot value. Now, obviously, if this was set to zero and you had no rebirths, you wouldn't be gaining any strength at all because uh, 25 uh, multiplied by zero would always give you zero. So we have to add one so that even if you are on one rebirth or none at all, you will still get 25 cash. So uh, what that's going to do is just give you some more strength. So what we want to do is we want to wait uh, for our cooldown to finish, which we set uh, over here to be one second. So we're just waiting one second, and then we will set debounce back to false. Okay, and obviously when the debounce is set to false again, uh, then you will be able to uh, get some more strength. So the debounce basically stops you from being able to spam click. So we've actually given them more strength here, but we haven't actually created these statistics yet. So let's go into our player added script in our stats and let's give them some leader stats and some strength. So we can say local leader stats. Now, if you didn't know, uh, lead, to get a leaderboard in the top right corner of your screen, you need to insert something called leader stats into your player. And any uh, values inside of that leader stats will uh, uh, be shown on the leaderboard, right? So we can say local leader stats equals, uh, and then we can say uh, instance.new folder and leader stats dot name equals leader stats now you need to make sure that leader stats is in lowercase and it's all one word else your leaderboard is not going to show up and then we can say leader stats dot parent equals player and then we're going to do the same thing for the uh, strength but we're just going to put the strength inside of the leader stats folder so local strength equals instance dot new and then we're going to do a number value and we're going to say strength dot name equals strength with a capital S. That's what I'm doing because it's a name. And then we can say strength dot parent equals leader stats, just like this. So if we go back to the base plate and click play, we should have some leader stats. And there we go. We have strength on our leaderboard here. Uh, we can just go ahead and add the rebirths in right now. So I'm going to say local rebirths equals instance dot new and this is going to be an integer value because we only want integers so uh, numbers that aren't decimal because you're only going to be able to uh, rebirth once twice three times etc so int value and we can say rebirths dot name equals rebirths and rebirths dot parent equals uh, leader stats all right let's go ahead and see if that works so we're going to go and uh, just see, yep, it's in our leaderboard over here. So let's click on wait. But we're not the strength when we click the tool. Ooh. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, try and debug this then. Now, if you see some printing already in the output or on screen, you can see actually above that if statement, we've got a print uh, fired. And we've also got a print hello in the output. That was because I was trying to just make sure that the leader stats were working uh, earlier on, which they were. And I forgot to take those prints out. So you don't have to add them in. That was just uh, so I was trying to pinpoint the problem so that the tutorial wasn't uh, long enough. Because in the end, that was not uh, what was causing the tool to break. So you don't need to worry about that uh, I'm just going to carry on with the debugging now so let's see if it gets past our if statement here so we can say print got past the if statement and we'll see if that runs I'm purposely leaving this in the video uh, so that you know how to debug your code so we're going to click again and it did get past the if statement okay so let's go ahead and see if it gets past the uh, debounce here I think it would. So let's see if it gets past the debounce variable. I'm pretty sure it would. So we'll click play and we'll fire the event. So it got past the debounce variable. And now let's see if it gets past. I think I found the issue, guys. I think I found the issue. What we're doing is we're just saying debounce. We're not saying debounce.value because we need to actually check the value of this debounce. We're not saying debounce.value. So if I was to put this uh, this print in here, and we say get past the debounce if statement, then I don't think this is going to print because 
uh, it can't find the debounce uh, value. Of course, yep, there we go. So what it's doing is it's going to this debounce app, but it's not actually checking the the data stored in that value. So if you were to go to the server storage and remote data, uh, it would just be looking at this object. It wouldn't actually be looking at the value here. It, it would just be given this object and it would be saying, well, what do I do with this? So we actually need to just say dot value, okay? If not debounce dot value, and that should do it. So we'll go ahead and run this again. And we'll click on wait, and there we go. We are uh, getting 25 strength per time. And if I go ahead and try to auto click, you can see I'm not, it's not spamming, although the event is being spammed. Our if statement, our debounce, is preventing it from giving us multiple lots of strength, and we're only being given strength every one second. So there we go, guys. That is the first part of our simulator game finished. Now, if you want to be able to do data saving, uh, rebirths, and much more, then you're going to want to go to part two in this simulator series, and that will be on your screen now. So go ahead, go to part two. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Alvin Blocks, by clicking on the logo. And if you want to take the source code, then you can click the join button next to the subscribe button to become a channel member. You'll get all of the source code straight away without having to do any of the work. So thanks for watching, and this is Alvin Blocks telling you to keep scripting.